Today's topic is 3.2, Solving Limits Part 1, and that's on pages 126 to 139 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is to demonstrate understanding of limits and continuity. And our lesson objectives, number one, to learn different methods to solve limits as x approaches a specific number, and number two, to be able to choose and apply the appropriate method in order to solve limits. So we won't always be lucky enough to have the graph of a function asked to find the limit of the function. That's what we did last day, we always had the graph. But today's lesson is dedicated to showing you some methods that you can employ to help you find the limit as x approaches a specific number. And sometimes one method won't work, so you may need to try a different one in order to get your answer. So what you need to be is, uh, you need to be patient. So our first method is the simplest method, and that's called substitution. So this is always a method you should try first. And it's just a plain old substitution sort of thing. So we're, if we're wondering uh, the limit as x approaches 3 for this function, we can simply just plug 3 into this function. So that becomes 3 squared plus 2, and we end up with 9 plus 2, so the limit is 11. That just means on a graph um, of a quadratic function, as x approaches 3 to this function, the height of the graph is approaching 11. Our second method is a sign analysis, and a sign analysis work, will work with rational functions if the number that x is approaching is also the location of the asymptote. The reason we can't use substitution in this case is because we would end up with a zero in the denominator. So here's our example. The limit as x approaches 2 of x divided by x squared minus 4. Well, if we were to factor this thing, it would be x over x minus 2, x plus 2. And here's where you see if we make a direct substitution, we get zero. And even if we substitute into the original, we're going to get a zero. So we need to do something called a sign analysis. We've done them before. And really what we're concerned about, we don't really care about the fact that uh, the x-intercept here is zero. We know that. We know that there's a vertical asymptote at, at negative two, and we know that there's one at positive two. But because we're asked to find the limit as x approaches two, we're just going to be concerned with um, this part of the sign analysis right here. So we're going to plug in a number between zero and two into this function, find out if it's positive or negative, just like we've always done. And so if I plug in a one, I get one over one minus four, which is negative. And what that means is we know that this is a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. And if this is a negative graph, that means that it, it looks something like this, if it's below the x-axis. And we know that it'll never actually touch this asymptote. It'll get really, really close to it. So this means that it's approaching negative infinity from the left-hand side. Now we need to see how what it's approaching from the right-hand side. Because remember in our talk with limits the other day, is that if it approaches the same number from both the left and the right hand side, it will have a limit. Um, and even if that is an asymptote, the limit can still exist. So now we plug in a number um, greater than two. I'm gonna plug in a three. So I'm gonna get three over nine minus four. Well, that's a positive number. So that means that on the right hand side of two, I get a positive answer, which means the graph is gonna look something like this. So as I approach it from the left-hand side, it approaches negative infinity. As I approach it from the right-hand side, it equals positive infinity. So in this case, you can say that the limit does not exist as x approaches 2. Our third method is the factor and cancel method. So if you have a rational function again, and you notice that some factors will cancel out if you factor both the numerator and the denominator, do so, and what you're left over with may be able to be solved with substitution. So here's our example, the limit as x approaches 2 again, of x squared minus 4 divided by x minus 2. Right off the bat, if we were to substitute a 2 in, we're going to get a 0 in the denominator. We can't get that. So what we do is we factor the top and bottom. Now one thing when you're doing limits is technically you need to write in the limit as x approaches 2 every time until you make that substitution at the end. So now we see that x squared minus 4 can be factored into x minus 2 and x plus 2. And so these two factors can cancel out. And we get the limit as x approaches 2 of just x plus 2, which means the answer is going to be 4. So again, you want to write down this limit part every step. It gets a little annoying, but you should be doing it every time. And then once you cancel stuff out, then you can end up with your answer, which is 4. Now, all that means is that this graph, and we've talked about this before, this graph, since there's two factors, one canceling out in the top and the bottom, is that there's a hole in that graph. And that hole appears at x equals 2 and y equals 4. Our fourth method is simplifying. 
So if you're faced with a confusing looking fraction, apply your knowledge of adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing fractions until you simplify the expression into something that you can substitute your x value into. So for example, I have the limit as x approaches 1 of 1 over x plus 1 minus a half, all divided by x minus 1. Now if I try to substitute in right away, I get a 0 in the bottom, so we can't do that, so we're going to have to manipulate this thing. So I've got the limit as x approaches 1. On the top I have two fractions, and that means, and I'm trying to subtract them, so I need a common denominator. So that means I'm going to multiply the first fraction by 2 over 2, I'm going to multiply the second fraction by x plus 1 over x plus 1. So I get 2 over 2x plus 1 minus x plus 1 over 2x plus 1. Oh, don't need that bracket. And that's all divided by this x minus 1 still. So now I can combine these two things because I do have the same denominator. So I have 2x plus 1 as my de denominator. And on the top I have 2 minus x minus 1. And that's all over x minus 1. Moving up over here, now I can combine the top. Well, I have 2 minus x minus 1. That gives me 1 minus x all over 2 times x plus 1. Notice how I'm not actually multiplying the 2 and the x plus 1 in together. A lot of times in these questions, you're going to find out that you might get a factor that cancels out with the top and the bottom. So if you leave it in factored form, you'll find that um, it'll be easier for you to identify what can actually, actually be cancelled out. Now, when we're dividing with fractions, so I have a fraction here divided by a fraction, that means I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of the bottom fraction. And we know that from our grade 9 days with working with fractions, so I have 1 minus x all over 2x plus 1, and now I'm going to be multiplying by not x minus 1, but the reciprocal of x minus 1. Now you have to recognize that 1 minus x and x minus 1 are actually opposites of each other. So when two opposites cancel out, you're left with a negative 1 as a result. It's like cancelling out a 5 and a negative 5. You're left with an answer of negative 1. So now I can write down my limit again. Now I have negative 1 on the top and I have 2 divided by x plus 1 on the bottom. And now when I look at this, I can substitute in my x equals 1 because I'm not going to get 0 in the bottom anymore. And when I do that, I now get negative 1 over 2 times 1 plus 1. That's negative 1 over 4. So that just means as x approaches 1 of this very confusing um, rational function, the height of that graph is, appro is approaching 1 a quarter. Our fifth and final method is called rationalizing. And if you're faced with radicals in either the top or the bottom of your rational function, rationalizing may help you get to a point where you can use substitution. So rationalizing is when you multiply both the top and the bottom of your fraction by the conjugate of either the top or the bottom. And the conjugate is the same terms but opposite signs in between. So as you can see here, the limit as x approaches 6 of root 3 plus r minus 3 divided by r minus 6. If I were to try to substitute in right away, on the bottom, I'm going to get 0, so I'm going to multiply by the conjugate. Now the conjugate again, same terms, but opposite signs. And we're always going to do that with the one with the root in it. So this now becomes 3 plus r plus 3. And on the bottom here, I'm going to do the same thing because I can't just multiply the top arbitrarily by something. I have to do that to the bottom as well. Now, on the top, we have things that are actually going to work out quite nicely. Root 3 plus r times root 3 plus r is the same thing as root 3 plus r squared, which just cancels out that root. So we end up with 3 plus r. Now, because it's a conjugate, the negative and the positive, this is like a difference of squares. If you were to factor a difference of squares, you know that there's only two terms left over. Um, so this, the middle terms actually cancel each other out, and we get a negative 9 here when we multiply 3 times negative 3. On the bottom, we're not actually going to multiply these two things together. We're going to write them just as two separate factors, and you'll see why in a second. Now, on the top, we can simplify, and that um, is 3 plus r minus 9 ends up being r minus 6, and on the bottom, we have r minus 6 and the root of 3 plus r plus 3. Now, I had mentioned this earlier in the video that sometimes you're going to have factors that can cancel out, and here is one of those cases. We have the r minus 6 and the r minus 6 cancelling out. 
and that gives us in the end the limit as x approaches 6 of 1 over the square root of 3 plus r plus 3. So how do you multiply this thing in, like the r times root 3 plus r, and then the r times 3, and the neg negative 6 by both those terms? You wouldn't have noticed that these two things are going to end up canceling out. So the best bet is to always leave it in factored form. Now if we try to plug in a 6, we can actually do that because we don't get a 0 in the denominator. So when we plug in a 6, we end up getting 1 divided by the square root of 3 plus 6, which is 9, plus 3. And that ends up being 1 over 3 plus 3. So that means your limit of this very confusing root and rational function is actually just 1 sixth. So in summary, there are many methods that you can employ to try and solve a limit algebraically. We talked about substitution, sign analysis, factor and cancel, simplifying and rationalizing. And almost every one of these ends up with you substituting a number into your expression. And all these results could be verified if you wanted by using a graphing software. So you could actually take a look and see if your answer is right. Uh, so your assignment is on page 138 and questions 1 to 39 are questions that you can do so far. Uh, good luck and we'll see you in class.